The program we wrote in the last section is perfectly functional. Let's review. It's hello.rb. We called that with the Ruby command. But when writing command line programs, it's often more useful to make them executable. We'll start by creating a file called hello, just by itself, no extension. This is a good practice for shell scripts. Putting on an extension exposes unnecessarily the implementation language and gives you less flexibility going forward if you want to, say, rewrite it in a different language. So here's hello. The code is going to be exactly the same as put as hello world. In fact, let's just copy it. But there's an extra line, which is called the shebang line. This hash symbol, I think it stands for shell here. And then the exclamation point is often pronounced bang, shebang. Now, for some languages, you actually have to put in the full path to the program used to run it. So for example, here, I can use which to see where Ruby is. I'm using a system called rbenv, which is mentioned in Learn Enough Dev Environment to be Dangerous, to manage different Ruby versions. That's where my Ruby executable is. So I could do something like this. In fact, this might work. Let's take a look. Now I have to change the mode with chmod to make it executable. Change mode plus x, hello. And then I can just run it by typing it. Now for commands like Ruby or standard Unix commands like ls or mv or cp, those are on what's called the path, which is especially discussed in Learn Enough Text Editor to be dangerous. In this case, this hello program is not on the path, so I have to tell my system where it is relative to the current directory, which is dot. It's in dot slash hello. Ah, so that did not work. It doesn't like this. In fact, maybe something about the RBN doesn't work. But in any case, this is not what you want to do. There's a tricky Ruby solution to this problem. You can do user bin env. USR bin env, I believe, for environment, and then Ruby. User bin env Ruby. Aha, there we go. So this finds the Ruby program in a way that doesn't require hard coding the full path to the program. By the way, you may have noticed that the syntax isn't highlighted here the way it was over here. We could change this by hand, like this. We can go down here and choose Ruby like that. But usually what I do is just close it and reopen it. It worked this time because in this case, Adam sees the shebang line and infers that this is a Ruby program. It's pretty cool. All right, let's check out the cloud.ee. We go. And there we go. even down to getting syntax highlighting after closing it and opening it up again. So you can see that the Cloud IDE really does have everything you need, including a highly capable editor that does this sort of syntax highlighting.